vote and avail yourself of those opportunities uh, as the Lord leads you. Um, is there anything else that anyone from the congregation would like to share before we enter into worship? If not, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in wealth, word, and deeds, by what we have done, and by what we have not done done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing, Give to our God. In the Lutheran Book of Worship on page 520.
Lord be with you. And let us pray. Oh God, you resist the cross and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. First lesson is from Proverbs 25. Do not exalt yourself in the king's presence, and do not claim a place among his great men. It is better for him to say to you, Come up here, than for him to humiliate you before his nobles. What you have seen with your eyes. Here's the first lesson. Read Psalm 112, response. Praise the Lord, bless him. Are those who fear the Lord who find great delight in his commands. The children will be mighty in the land, the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dies for the upright, but for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their faces, on their hopes. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honor. The wicked will see and be vexed. They will gnash their teeth and waste away. The longings of the wicked will come to nothing. The second lesson is from Hebrews 13. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not do it. Do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Here ends the second reading. <laughs> Then you'll be honored in the presence 
of all the other gifts. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to the host, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they do not repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Gospel of our Lord. that comes into 
our lives. So, the first point on what a humble person is, he knows when he walks into the room that God is the most important person in that room. He's not the most important person in that room, and nobody else is the most important person in that room. He knows that God is in charge of the things that happen in that room, and that God has taken him to that place and that time for a purpose. When he walks into a room, he's also gracious. He knows what God has given him. He knows the talents he has. He knows maybe a little about, a bit about the other people that are in the room. Maybe even a little bit of how the other people in the room think of themselves. But they may think that they are up here in society and he is down here. But that doesn't bother him because he knows who he is in the Lord. A humble person is honest. He doesn't have to cheat. He doesn't have to lie. He doesn't have to connive and make plans to uh, get something out of somebody else because he knows that everything that he has was given to him by the Lord. And the Lord, he's a, just a steward of the things that he's been given. And so he can use those things to glorify God, whether somebody else tries to cheat him or not. So he is honest. And he knows that God is in control of what he has, as well as what his neighbor or partner or a uh, pers uh, person he's dealing with in business has, and that God is in charge of all of that. A new humble person is generous. Uh, the Psalms that we read talked about him giving to the poor. Uh, one thing that goes along with being generous is having hospitality. And the Hebrew scripture talks about that. Opening his house to poor and rich alike. Not making a distinction as to whether they could pay to stay there or, or uh, need help while they were staying in his house. But having hospitality towards all classes of people. And being generous towards all classes of people. And being generous not to show off, but because that's what God told him to do with the funds and the blessings that he's received. And a humble person is empathetic. It talked about in Hebrews, uh, thinking of the poor and praying for the people in prison as if you were in prison with them. That can also carry out uh, over to uh, praying for people who are ill, people who have cancer, or people who have financial needs, as if you had those needs as well. And not only seeing the need, but also asking God what God would have you do with what you have to help with that need. Or uh, in the case of the prisoner, what God would have you do to help take care of that person's family, uh, his business while he's in prison, his affairs, um, without making, getting a gain from it. A humble person, as I mentioned before, knows his position before God. He knows that in the sight of God, he's like a little fly on the, one of these poles in the whole scheme of the universe. And yet, 
God of the universe saw that little fly and sent his son to die for that person. And because we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're no longer just a little fly or a little speck on the wall. But we are called princes and princesses. We are called children of God. We are righteous before God because of the blood of Jesus. That doesn't make us proud, but that makes us humble before God. And when we're humble before God, we can be humble before other people. So, as we go back to the Gospel lesson, which person in that parable are you? Are you the person that when you come into a feast, or come into a room, expect to be the most honored person in the room? Are you the person that takes the lowest seat and then is told to come up higher? Or third option, maybe just to wait around and, and have the host seat you where he thinks you belong. And when you are the host, do you make all of your guests feel the same? Or do you honor those that are richer and kind of push the poor to the other side? Or do you make all of your guests feel the same? We go back into the world this week. Practice your humility. Practice the position that you know you have in Christ but also that you are, since you are a child of God, you have a position in the world that nobody in the world can put you down. Not to be proud of it, but to walk humbly before your God and to do the things that God tells you to do. Second of all, the way Jesus did them. And third, a way that glorifies God. Give like Jesus to quite a challenge. That's the challenge I give to you this morning as we close. We sing Amazing Grace on page 448.
believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the people of God gathered here and throughout the world, we offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all people in need. Lord God, Heavenly Father, first of all, I want to thank and praise you that we can gather here in your name. Pray that you help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to teach us and help us to apply as we go out to the world the, the lesson of humility and knowing our place in you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we also want to thank you for the little bit of rain that we had this week. Lord, in our opinion, it was not enough to help all the dryness and the uh, needs of the ground that we have. But you have given us moisture in your wisdom. We pray for more rain, Lord, and yet not enough so that uh, farmers can't begin and continue the harvest when that time comes. Lord, be with the farmers as they do start harvesting corn. Some have started cutting and chopping corn. Others have started picking corn. And Lord, we just pray that you'll keep them safe. Lord, they're working around large machinery, dangerous machinery. So we pray, Lord, that you'll keep all that are involved in that safe in your care. We also pray, Lord, because of the dryness, the fire hazard is high. We learned that from news we have from Tecumseh uh, last night, where a spark on a rock caused several acres and several hundred bales of hay to burn. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will be safe about fires, and, Lord, that you will uh, give us moisture we need so that that doesn't happen again. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the first week of school that kids have had. Be with each one of our children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, any child that we're involved with, or teachers that we know that you will help them as they settle into this new school year. Lord, there's lots to be learned. There's lots to be learned, not only practical things, but also about relationships and conducting uh, yourself in uh, a group. And Lord, just so many uh, things we need to learn to live with each other. Pray, Lord, that you will be in each one of our school buildings, each one of the school rooms, and that you will guide each one of our teachers that they may listen to you and conduct their classes the way that you would have them conduct their classes. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to pray for the world, Lord. Keep your hands on Ukraine and Russia, Taiwan and China, and wherever else there is conflict and disagreement going on. We pray especially for the Christians in those areas, Lord, that they may have opportunities to share your gospel, not only with friends and neighbors, but also with the enemy. That eventually arms can be laid down 
and uh, former enemies to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We especially pray for Stan and Peggy and Donna, Rebecca, as they have uh, physical difficulties, financial difficulties, relationship difficulties. Lord, whatever their need for prayer is, we lift that up to you. For you know better than us, we do what the answer is and what the solution is for each one of their situations. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Gracious Lord, all these things we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We return to the Lord a portion of what he's first given us.
lift up his countenance and give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.